Hey everyone, welcome to this weekly Sidereal Astrology Forecast for the week of February 28th to March 6th of 2022. All right, so a very important week astrologically. Uh, first of all, we are ending the current lunar month as we approach Wednesday. Wednesday will be the new moon in Aquarius conjunct Jupiter. Uh, if you were expecting me to say Pisces, definitely check out the link down below for more information on that. But uh, new beginnings certainly uh, developing this week, and I think very much about maybe future-oriented stuff, collective things as well, and all in all just expanding our perception on the future. So with that new beginning, a lot is concentrated around that Wednesday time period. We do have Mercury over Saturn, so our minds are getting even more of that more concretizing, uh, more structured energy, which has already been going on with uh, Mercury in Capricorn. But um, also here around the, uh, the new moon on Wednesday is that Venus and Mars will be going over deep and intense Pluto. So Venus, the planet of yin, of receptivity, uh, and Mars, the planet of Yang, of assertiveness, uh, who are next to each other. And so they are going to conjoin later in the week as they have been very close to each other already, um, but uh, them going over very deep Pluto. So there could be some transformative stuff to empower ourselves with, reclaim our personal power with in some way, and a new beginning likely in terms of how we relate with others and how we connect to life in general. And then the weekends with the sun passing over that Jupiter, again, new perspectives expanding and that conjunction with Venus and Mars uh, going exact on Sunday, uh, just accentuating what's already been going on and another step in the right direction regarding how we can balance and merge the yin and yang aspects of ourselves. All right, so let's go and take a look at all of this here in more detail when we return. Alrighty, so here's the sky for this week. We're going to look at this for each day of the week, starting first with February 28th. Um, and as you can see here, we are using the visible sky on this channel, which is very different from mainstream astrology. Uh, for example, the new moon uh, will be said in mainstream astrology to be in Pisces. But if you do look up at the visible sky, which is what we're using here, true sidereal, you will see that the new moon will be in Aquarius, uh, conjunct Jupiter and Aquarius. So notice that the signs are different and they do change between systems. So if you are new to this, definitely check out that link down below for more information. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, let's jump right into where the planets are placed coming into this week. Of course, we have Venus and Mars kind of trailing each other. There's They've already conjoined, in fact, and now Venus is going to be uh, passing over Mars. Uh, so she was behind Mars when Mars passed over Venus. Now Venus, who's now gaining momentum after her retrograde, is going to pass over Mars. So that conjunction will be at the end of the week. But they have been uh, tr uh, transiting through expansive Sagittarius. So it has been good to be connecting to life and relationships in a more free-spirited way, to be open-minded, to be willing to expand our perceptions, and maybe even discuss these more abstract things and connect on this more abstract level with our relationships as both these plants do deal with our interpersonal lives. Um, but along with this, Mercury has been in concretizing Capricorn. Our minds have been more into the area that deals with work and accomplishment and discipline, hopefully in its highest expression, discipline and patience and perseverance. So still good to do that, especially this week with that Mercury passing over Saturn here, adding to that uh, concretizing and hopefully responsible energy there with the mental and communicative side of things and of course the sun is transiting through aquarius still so the main focus as will be especially with the new moon uh, will be on how we can cultivate our future visions so a great time of focusing on our own future aspirations um, and again to think big and expand those with jupiter but even collective ones as well. This is a great time to be focused on, you know, the humanity, the future of the world, collective stuff, and how we can really join up with others of similar vision, you know, to uh, accentuate that future-oriented energy. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look now at uh, each day of the week, starting first with this Monday, the 28th. So no major aspects here, and we are ending this lunar cycle, right? So as we do approach Wednesday, it is the balsamic phase of the lunar month, the ending phase. It is good to complete things from this previous lunar cycle and create some space, right? Maybe release some things, create some space for these new beginnings, which will be slowly building new momentum <clears throat> as we do come out of this 
new moon going into next week. This is the lowest energy phase of the lunar cycle. So it is good, particularly around this, let's just say this whole week, to really listen and see what new does arise and to slowly um, you know, build momentum as we get into next week. All right, but definitely ending phase, closure phase, spiritual phase of the cycle as we approach Wednesday here. Now the moon will be in Capricorn on Monday, so it is a good day for some of that responsibility. Some of that, again, Mercury, Saturn energy, that long-term view, patience, discipline, anything that requires patience, discipline, perseverance, uh, very good there to develop on that Monday time period. And then once we do get to Tuesday and we get closer to that new moon, we will certainly start to feel that new moon energy as the moon starts to transition into Aquarius for the new moon in Aquarius. So in this case, <clears throat> transition into the more collective matters, again, with the moon more emotionally attuned to them and starting to gear up for some of those new beginnings there. And this is also where the sun will start to sextile Uranus for that new moon. It's nothing major, but it is a nice opening to really get into some of this, uh, just like Aquarius, future-oriented energy, but in this case, maybe a little bit of excitement, maybe a little bit of change. It's just an opening. Sex styles are just openings, but anything that is a little bit different outside the norm, maybe it's a way of expressing ourselves that's a bit different or outside the norm. Uh, good to do this, an opening to do that. Anything that is about letting out that individual self-expression and um, also doing things a little bit differently uh, is great uh, as we do approach that new beginning. And then the new moon, of course, will be on Wednesday. I'll make a separate video on that. But again, new beginning to the future energies, our connection to the future, both personal aspirations and collective ones as well. The uh, best way of working with Aquarius is to connect to that true self, <clears throat> that part that really wants to be free, listen to our excitement, challenge the status quo perhaps, and to join up with others towards a similar vision for the future. Others that are also maybe uh, wanting to induce some change of some kind or have some future vision we can connect with. So Aquarius is very good for group things, collective things, community. And again, sharing towards that future is great. Uh, New Moon will be conjunct Jupiter, which is very much about what are the potentials, what is our beliefs, our perspectives on life, and certainly a new beginning with those beliefs and perspectives about future-oriented Aquarius is great. And reconnecting with that side that is spirited, is open-minded, and does want to uh, you know, pursue that spirit, uh, what we're inspired to do, what uh, you know, we're open-minded to do. And this is actually an interesting uh, thing because for most of us, this is going to be in the part of the chart uh, for each of our individual charts where Jupiter is going to conjoin Neptune next month uh, in April. And so that's going to be a new beginning with our more soul-guided self, which we're probably all feeling collectively already, to do things that are more important to us on a soul level in life. And this could certainly be a new beginning in that area. So if you do want to check your chart, unfortunately, the chart calculator is still down. But um, depending on whatever your, your, uh, your chart is, wherever Aquarius is in that chart, uh, you can't see that new beginning um, area for you, which I think will be playing a big role next month as well with that new beginning with the soul guided stuff with Jupiter and Neptune conjunct. Anyways, <clears throat> with this new moon, we do have, um, again, that Mercury over Saturn. So there is this new beginning to our minds. Again, it's already been good for produ productive stuff, achieving stuff with our minds. Uh, maybe anything that uh, might be shifting in the right direction. It's a great new moon to, again, set new intentions for future stuff, but also what we know will take time, patience, and perseverance that we can put some mental energy into or maybe some communicative energy into um, is great here as well. All right, so lots of the concentration of energy here. And then as we start to get into the Wednesday time and we're still in that new moon energy, excuse me, Thursday time, as we start to get into Thursday the 3rd, still in that new moon energy, uh, Mars and Venus will be passing over deep Pluto. So it is a conjunction and conjunctions are inherently neutral. However, Pluto is a very deep energy to work with. And this is two very personal planets, Venus and Mars. Venus is the yin side of ourself. Mars is the yang side. They've been already together, which is, again, great for balancing the yin and yang aspects of ourself, merging these two together. But certainly a death and rebirth, I would say, collectively. So to allow for this, Pluto, I think the best way of working with Pluto is to allow for the quote unquote death of things. In this case of our ego, of our needs, of what we want. That's the Mars side of it. Maybe also with relationships, 
and our values. That's the Venus side to it. But all in all, allowing for that death and what will be and what is out of this a rebirth. It's certainly a transformation to our more yang side with Mars. So as we allow for those you know, aspects of the ego to die off, to be let go, then we're reborn. And so the ego is reborn, our drives, our assertiveness, our initiative, our confidence gets reborn in a much more spiritual way, in a more essential way, which is great. And same with the values and relationship stuff, allowing for, you know, any of our values to, again, die, some of the relationship energy to, quote unquote, die, to allow for that rebirth. And it's fundamentally to help us shed the skin, to shed the outworn and the, maybe the past patterns or things we're doing for control or holding on tightly to things, um, you know, for safety even. And uh, all these kinds of, you know, more instinctual surface level ego based needs um, it is typically good to approach it in this more non-attached way to allow for the rebirth. And as a result of this, which will likely be as we get into next week, even over the weekend, but into next week, especially after their conjunction, uh, we'll likely be feeling a lot of that rebirth energy there uh, to both our yin and yang sides of ourself to, again, our needs and our values, um, our independence and our relationships. It's so good to see that these are really two sides of the same coin, our needs, others' needs, our you know personal values, our relationship values, um, you know just all in all our desires and values in general to allow the death of those for the rebirth, which is certainly taking place though. So inherently neutral, and so a lot of it depends on our willingness to dive deep, to be non-attached as best as we can, and to allow for that death, so to speak, uh, for that rebirth. All right, so very powerful time here, all concentrated around the Wednesday. <clears throat> and Thursday time period here. Now, once we do get to this Thursday, this is where the moon will start to go into Pisces for pretty much the whole rest of the week, uh, up and through up until Sunday. And so Pisces, the fish, is about receptivity. It's a good weekend, let's say, for letting go of what's outside of our control, find a little bit more peace in our life. Again, do things that are more soul-fulfilling for us, which I think is part of this new beginning anyways conjunct Neptune, but uh, definitely Pisces energy there from Thursday through Saturday. And Saturday, we do have the uh, sun passing over Jupiter, which is part of that new moon, but going exact on Saturday, probably a nice step in the right direction with that inspired side. Uh, good again to be open-minded, to be a bit jovial, to be inspired and to cultivate those energies. And of course, you know, anything that does involve Jupiterian things like philosophy, spirituality, more abstract stuff, could be great to focus on uh, those that sort of weekend time period there. And then this is, of course, where Venus and Mars will conjoin again. Venus this time passing over the Mars. Um, and uh, again, they're still going to be close as they're still moving at roughly the same speed. But... Um, yeah, this is a nice step in the right direction with, again, merging that yin and yang side. So how can we be active yet receptive, right? Be assertive yet willing to listen. Uh, in our relationships, be assertive but also tactful and considerate. All right, yin-yang balance. It's really the theme, I would say, with all this. That's what's getting transformed and just great intentions to set with what has been already a conjunction there for the past weeks. All right, everyone. So that is the week in a nutshell. Most importantly, uh, really a lot of things. Uh, the new beginning, certainly uh, approaching Wednesday, the ending phase of this cycle, new beginnings, uh, slowly building out of Wednesday towards that future vision, Aquarius and inspiring side, which is Jupiter. Anything towards that is fantastic. Uh, we have a grounding energy with Mercury over Saturn and both of those planets in Capricorn, grounding particularly to our mind and anything communication based or language based we can be working on and uh, transformations uh, across the board with the interpersonal planets of Venus and Mars the yin and yang who have been good to incorporate to blend together but now uh, allowing for the death and the rebirth uh, for those can be very empowering and very transformative so letting go of those uh, things we do for safety security that we don't really want to be doing obviously safety security is important but not as important as truth and what we really want. And so these types of experiences help us release the actions and values in this case towards the safety, security in order to do what's really empowering for us and what we really want to 
either take action with with Mars or attract to us with Venus. But anyways, very powerful week for that as well. All right, so have a great week, everyone. Thank you again for watching. Be sure to click the like button if you're watching this on YouTube. And if you're not yet signed up for MTZ Insiders, it is a newsletter where you do get these videos released first before YouTube. So do check that out. I'll link down below. Have a great week, everyone. See you all again for next week's astrology forecast. Take care.